Hello and welcome to the class experiment where I am about to discuss oh dear god fist full of vengeance so this unfortunate accident stars Iko Uas the guy from all the other movies I've been watching recently star of the raid and the raid 2 headshot the night comes for us. And now he's in Fistful of Vengeance, a 2022 film, which came across to me like it was a 1990s pilot to a TV show that just was never turned into a show. But no, unfortunately, this is a movie based on a Netflix TV series, a Netflix series called Wu Assassins, which I've never seen and kind of left me wondering what the bleep is going on. So Eco is a Wu Assassin, which means he has the power of the Tao and people try to take his chi because shows like this are very successful. And he's joined by a group of people who help him and apparently are a bunch of uh, <clears throat> trust fund kids because they travel around and don't have jobs. And when they are seen in their everyday luxurious life, they're grilling lobsters on a beach and talking about that time that they were selling expensive cars in foreign lands while banging hot cops because that's what they did for a living the hot cop in question i'd like to refer to as the great value zoe saldana because she's not zoe saldana but she's black and she's definitely just there for looks instead of uh talent if you will and that's apparent when they just throw in a weird random sex scene in the middle of the movie and she's topless and you do actually get to see the boobs. And, uh, yeah, it's weird. Like, everybody in this movie has a uniform except for the cop. The cop is wearing the same uniform as everybody else in the show, which apparently is a black leather jacket, some form of white button-up shirt, t-shirt. But no, no, her, no, she has the black sports bra under her leather jacket that this is what she's wearing out in, in public right just just the bra just just a bra she's a cop it's I, I don't know it could have been a Kevlar bra I have no idea then there's the guy that I'd like to refer to as the Asian Ryan Reynolds he doesn't look like Ryan Reynolds but when he's narrating the movie at the beginning, which you can always tell it's going to be a great movie when it starts with somebody narrating it for no reason whatsoever, uh, whatsoever other than, uh, I don't know, bad, bad writing. There's a lot of bad writing. There's a lot of bad writing in this. Yeah. So he starts narrating it. I have no idea who's talking, by the way, because I've never watched Blue Assassins. And thanks to this movie, I probably never will. So I'm hearing the voice and I'm thinking like, oh, I didn't know Ryan Reynolds is in this. And then they show him and I'm like, that's that's not Ryan Reynolds. But every time he talks in the movie, I'm thinking like, it's just a non-funny Ryan Reynolds. So then there's guy number three. I'm just going to leave it as guy number three because uh, bad acting, no personality, and... Uh, really crappy fight scenes i don't even know like what purpose he shows he has in the show honestly um he kind of just doesn't have one kind of like annoying girl who uh is apparently an ex of asian ryan reynolds and she serves absolutely no purpose other than just being dumb she's she's dumb like during that whole sex scene thing it looked like everybody in the movie was about to bang in their like various locations and they had like the weird 
pop uh, version cover song going over the in the background, which is just throughout the entire movie. Eminem pops up. Apparently, he needs money because he sold one of his songs to be in this. Eminem, wh what's going on? Are things really that bad in Detroit? So, yeah. <clears throat> They're about to bang, Asian Ryan Reynolds and, and Dumb Chick, and all of a sudden she gets a text message from Unknown, because that's always a good sign, and it's like, I can bring them back. Just come to the gate and I'll show you. So instead of going to get some of Asian Ryan Reynolds' big D, she goes off to meet Unknown to save people who are not referred to in said text just i can bad writing bad writing or just trying to show how really dumb this chick is and then she gets talked into doing a whole bunch of stuff that is counterproductive to everybody else and almost gets them killed by the end of the movie they they're still trusting her because everybody in this show is horribly stupid everyone's dumb everyone is dumb in this this the show everyone it's it's like an action version of the kardashians except no it's that that's accurate no that that's actually like really accurate it's the asian version of the kardashians so some things i noticed with the horrible writing one scene they're trying to escape from a hotel where evil chick who is trying to destroy the universe for some reason. You can always tell that some there's there's like there's a difficulty in the writer's room when they're like, well, what if they just tried to destroy the universe? That's basically committing suicide and bringing everybody else with you. There's there's no power in that. It's just dumb. Again, everybody in this movie is dumb, including the writers. So yeah. <clears throat> there's this big fight scene in a hotel evil Asian chick takes over everybody in the hotel everybody's on her side they're all brainwashed they're sent to kill the Wu assassins because assassin has a positive connotation to it makes them really sound like the good guys yeah so all these people show up and they're holding weapons they have no idea what they're doing because they've been taken over right it's kind of like invasion of the body snatchers Said innocent person has no idea what the F is going on. But all of a sudden, the Wu assassins are killing everybody. Even the great value Zoe Saldana is taking her gun and like blowing motherfuckers away. And uh, she, keep in mind, she's a cop. She's supposed to be a cop. She's one of the good ones, right? I guess not. Yeah, she goes blasting people who have no idea what the F is going on. Oh no, there's like no attempt to like try to isolate these people until uh, you know they actually get evil chick and and they're freed from her grasp. Oh no, not nothing like that. They're just like, eh, well, what are you gonna do? It's like the Matrix. You know, Neo's going around slaughtering a bunch of people because agents took him over. Eh, not my problem. They're just gonna die in a battery anyways. So in one scene, uh, dumb girl and guy number three find a car in the parking garage. And the guy looks through the windshield and notices that the key is sitting right on the, the dashboard. The key to this really expensive, nice car is sitting on the dashboard in a hotel. Um, yeah, that, that, that doesn't happen. So yeah, there was that, there was that good moment. Then there was a scene where the bad guys were taking large propane tanks, you know, like you would hook up to your grill, and they were busting the top off for no reason whatsoever other than it looks cool. They were like breaking the top off. Propane is spewing out, which is bad because they're trying to use it as a bomb. And the longer it sits there with the gas escaping, the less explosion you get.
from said bomb. So you can tell how horribly stupid this is. But they do it, and they throw it under the, uh, the vehicle that they're attacking with the woo assassins in it. And then they shoot it, and they explode. The car doesn't blow up. The car just flips because good guys are in it. Ever notice the car never blows up when the good guys are in it? Horrible writing. Again. Thanks. Well, then later, the good guys were like, hey, that was a brilliant idea. And so, <clears throat> great value, Zoe Saldana. It's like, hey, there's propane tanks. And again, they break the tops off, which it's not necessary. It's, it's not. And do they realize how heavy propane tanks are when they're filled? They're not light. They're not something that you can just toss like 50, 75 feet across the room towards somebody else. That doesn't happen. It, it's, it's dumb. The, the movie is just dumb. And then because the writers apparently have no idea uh, what martial art Iko Uas uh, practices, they have a scene where he is working on a Chinese Wing Chun wooden dummy. And he has no idea what the F he's doing. It's bad. He's just like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> While having a conversation with this other guy in the background. And I'm like, he's, he's never seen one of these before. So hopefully, I'm, I'm really hoping you guys never go watch this movie, even though it's on Netflix, and if you're paying for Netflix, I mean, go ahead, click on it. I mean, you're paying to have access to it. I just think your IQ would probably remain intact instead of declining a little bit if you, if you did watch it. <sighs> so the end of the movie, this multi-billionaire dude who I finally realized and uh, yeah he was he was in a horrible movie like 20 years ago as this asshole kid but now he's a billionaire kind of fit and um, said billionaire is like yeah I'm gonna help the evil chick try to destroy the, the universe because that's what billionaires try to do is destroy things that they want to control I guess. Anyways, they uh, <laughs> they bring they bring about uh, Tuco. Tu was that the guy? I don't know. He's supposed to be like the the first the first man, uh, the the creator of the the chi the Tao, and he comes in into existence, taking over this dude's body, and then he. They never explain this. There's a lot of things they never explain, by the way. There's conversations that have absolutely no fucking purpose to them. And there's a punchline at the end. And it makes no fucking sense because there is absolutely no context beforehand that leads up to it. It's amazing how horribly dumb this thing is. So anyways, this dude, the, the first man... He appears, and he's, like, floating around. They're doing all the cool wire work stuff. And then all of a sudden, he tries to escape into what I can only describe as the butthole of the universe. It looks like a butthole in the floor of this cavern in Thailand that's supposed to be, like, where the universe was created or some shit. And this guy goes into it, and next thing you know, all the Wu assassins are getting on these ropes, and they're going in into the, the hole, no lube, and they're hanging there into a vast expansion of nothingness while trying to fight this dude, and I'm like, why does this dude want to be here? There's, there's like nothing, there's nothing. They could have been in the middle of space anywhere, Right? And this guy's just floating around, they're fighting, they're doing their thing. And then all of a sudden, like, the, the people who are outside of the butthole, <laughs> I'm just going to read that. There's no other way to describe this thing. They're, like, trying to pull the, the ropes up after they defeat this dude and, and leave him in the vast colon of space. And, uh, yeah, then they're, like, cranking this thing and they're 
getting pulled out like like beads on on a a wire you know what i mean it's pretty weird the the whole movie is just really weird and after they defeat that guy which actually um man i i lost the whole point of the plot of this thing like halfway through and i was like wait they were trying to find the dude that killed this chick who's not in the movie so i have no idea who they're talking about and now they're they're doing this thing and oh they're having sex and and they're fighting over what's going on again so back to the trust fund assholes the movie ends with them on a beach and they're grilling and they've got prawns and couple other things and they're like making all this really nice food and they're sitting in lounge chairs and they're like so what do we do next i don't know i've defeated everyone oh a vacation then awesome did i mention that everybody in this movie for some reason has a weird english accent that comes and goes it's not consistent there are just some scenes where they have an accent and then other scenes where they don't uh, consistency would be nice. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's, uh, oh, the nightclub scene. There's always the nightclub scene. You ever notice that? Two guys walk into a nightclub. Everybody's dancing. Music's going. There's strobe lights. Women rocking, walking around half naked. Everybody's drunk, high on something. And then all of a sudden there's a fight and everybody's like, oh, look at this. It's like part of the show. Whoa. And uh, yeah. And then there's like guns shooting, but the bullets never like miss. They always hit their target. They don't travel through the body and hit like the half-dressed girl that's behind said bad dude. That never happens. It's just weird. The whole nightclub fight scene, it's just weird to me. I expect a fist fight. Once you pull guns out, I'm sorry, there's other bodies dropping. That's just, it's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. So, uh, Fistful of Vengeance. Did I mention the name is just god awful too? Fistful of Vengeance. Who the fuck came up with that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm sick. I'm not sorry. Like, why was this fucking thing made? It's just, like, the big four was was ten times better than this. And the big four, not a great movie. It's not. Uh, but it was entertaining. It was funny. Um, the plot made a hell of a lot more sense. And uh, less, less bad acting than this piece of shit. Yes. Um... Iko Uas, who, he's Indonesian, doesn't really speak English as far as I can tell. Uh, his acting skills were far better than everybody else who was in this movie. I don't know if they thought that having an English accent would make up for the, the lack of acting ability that these people had. It, it didn't. And as for uh, great value, Zoe Saldana, like, obviously... She had to go topless at some point in this movie to make up for everything that came before and afterwards. Like, oh, I'll forgive her for all that shit, and oh, maybe we'll get to see those again. That was probably the thinking behind it. They're like, if we're going to save this movie, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do this. And that's never good for a woman's acting career. It only worked for Salma Hayek. And she, this, this chick is no Salma Hayek. No. I miss Salma Hayek. So that's about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say like one out of five stars. One. And this movie just came out. It's, it's just now available on uh, <clears throat> Netflix. They have it on there as part of the Woo Assassin series which I'm never going to watch because holy shit was this bad. And this is supposed to be like a feature length film, right? This is supposed to be like 
you know, the show, the show is like the bottom level product and you work your way up to the movie. Or maybe the movie is trying to save the show, kind of like what they did with uh, Firefly. Do you remember that? Serenity? Yeah, maybe the movie will be good enough that they'll want to turn it into a TV series and bring that back. That shit did not work. So, yeah. Mm hmm. One out of five stars. Thank you, Netflix, for wasting more of your money and not giving us good content. And, uh, <sighs> keep on typing.